All right, inside the Core Velocity 5.0, I wanted to lay out the program really quick on what you can expect and why I built it this way. And then we're going to look at some common problems or areas where most go wrong. Now, the first area that we're going to start with is core awareness. With core awareness, what we're doing here is we're just starting with the brain. We're making the body and the, we're trying to create or establish a mind-muscle connection because you, you've got to think that the brain controls every single move that you make. So the mind and the body, there, there is one. So when we move over to own the zone, we're going to really discuss breathing and how that uh, affects and relates to movement because too often players don't breathe and it sends the wrong signals to the brain and a lot of the mechanical problems that you might see or appear as inefficient movement simply uh, can be traced back to breathing. And then finally, in the first phase of core awareness, we're going to talk about be a hammock. That's where we're going to anchor the feet and the eyes and we're going to learn how to hinge because think about an, a hammock. If you're going to be able to move through the middle, both sides have to be anchored. So the goals of core awareness are to start with the brain, is to create kinesthetic awareness, aware of how your body moves. Hip proprioception is just a sense or feel for the hips. Most players don't have that. And then core stability, because without stability, pelvic stability, uh, it's almost like we're trying to throw a baseball from a canoe. So by creating more stability in the core, it allows for more mobility to the distal segments, such as the shoulder. So the goal for core awareness is to make a mind-muscle connection. And the reason why this is important is because without proprioception, uh, sense for your body, there's no such thing as coordination. Imagine if your hands fell asleep and then you were trying to play the piano. It's just not going to happen. So once we've established core awareness, we're going to move into core movement. Now in core movement, what we're really working on here are just the basic uh, functional movements of the hips. We're increasing kinesthetic awareness, stability, hip proprioception, everything we discussed uh, in awareness, and then we're going to start to carry this over. Now how we're going to do this in core movement, initially you're going to start off on the knees. The reason we're starting off on the knees is because most players struggle to rotate. It's because of coaching and poor movement quality. So we're going to limit the brain's choices. Uh, with move the middle. The second thing that we're going to do, we're going to move into a standing corkscrew the hips. Here we're just trying to take what we've learned by anchoring the feet in the eyes and moving the middle. We're going to do this standing. And then finally, we're going to move into anchor down, which will be comprised of uh, a finisher or split stance and simply lifting. So the goal in core movement is to increase mobility, stability, hip proprioception, awareness, core flexibility, and then start to master the basic movements because what we're doing here is we're just coordinating the basic movements because when you think about pitching everybody wants to start with mechanics but mechanics are the end product what how I view pitching mechanics is just a series of synchronized motions comprised of basic movements coordinated movements that the body is aware of because if I'm not aware of the movements how can I move if I can't move how can I synchronize even those basic movements into motion, I can't. So to us, it starts with, we believe it's core awareness. Be aware of the brain of how the body moves because it's controlling every movement. Master the basic movements, coordinate those to where you can do those right, left, however, and then we're gonna just synchronize the basic movements into motion. So with core motion, what we're working on here is just connection, rhythm, tempo, just sequencing the body and it's going to be a mindful movement because obviously as we start to put this together, you're going to be mindful at first. So it's going to require some deep practice. And some of the categories we're going to discuss are turn the corner. That's where we're just rotating around a firm front leg way more. We're actually moving in this position because in the core movement, most of those are just going to be standstill stationary positions. Get in the ground where we're going to talk about how to uh, generate more ground force. And of course, ride the slide or ride the slide, mirror the slope, which has become a very popular concept, but here's what you gotta realize is that most wanna jump to the fun stuff, ride the slide, but unless I have the, the foundation of core movement and awareness, you're just, you're playing Zynga, you're wasting your time, we'll talk about that here in a second. And then finally, shape the clay. I'm gonna show you how to take any drill, how any drill can be any drill. It all starts with the mind and what you're trying to do. So we're gonna go from mindful movement until finally the goal is mindless movement. It's without thought. This is when we step on the mound. This is core velocity phase four. Here's where you've learned to trust what you feel and we're starting to compete. Some of the tenants are gonna be just variability, changing it up, over, under, distraction, skill transfer, 
Uh, we're also going to dis discuss crossover skill ability, crossover skill, and then crossover ability, which we will get to later. But all you need to know is that we're going to start with the brain first. We're going to master the basic movements. Once we've done that, we're going to start to move into motion, being this is a pitching program um, with core motion. This could be hitting, this could be golf, this could be football, whatever sport that you play, because core motion is going to be the positional requirements. And then core velocities, where we're really going to submerge the task to where once you step on the mound, it's just easy. Now let's compare the core velocity belt program to what we see most players doing. If you've ever played Jenga, uh, you know that as we start to build higher and higher, we start to pull um, out certain blocks. Uh, more than likely you're, it's going to tumble or it's going to fall over and that's what happens a lot of times is that most programs, 99% start with the body. They, they, may, they might talk about the brain but there is no focus on being able to feel the body, on breathing or any of the, uh, the mind-body connections. And so when, when they go into movement, movement's not really discussed because to most it's all about mechanics. They don't realize that um, pitching mechanics is just a series of synchronized motions comprised of coordinated movements. So if I can't coordinate a movement, how can I put it into motion? And there's no way to move if I'm not aware of what body part I'm moving. So the problem is, is they start at the very bottom, uh, or there's not much focus, if any at all, on awareness. There's no focus on movement. Instead of letting the player feel the movement to know the difference between right and wrong, it's just verbal instructions and they're just focused on different positions. So really what happens, as Greg Cook says, is they move worse more often. So when they get into the motion, what everybody wants to do, they want the fun stuff. They want to jump straight into the drills. They want to emulate other pitchers' motions. They think because he can do this and he throws 95, well then all I've got to do is look like this guy and I can throw 95. So the focus for most programs is, is the physical side with velocity. It's 100% physical, it's the arm strength, it's the weight training, it's the pitching mechanics, and we wonder why players overthink and they get hurt. They just don't have the foundation. If I were to set this pyramid uh, exactly as you said, imagine how long that would stay stacked up. It's going to come falling down, and then you're going to start all over again. So there's the difference, is that we build the awareness first, then we move into the movement motion, and we just believe that velocity is just a byproduct of doing everything else right and laying the foundation. So there's the difference between the core velocity belt program and 99% of today's program. So how the core velocity components are laid out. Step one is going to be your mind-muscle connection. And as you'll see through here, it's just breath work, hinge holds, just proprioception. Movement prep is your two knee is where they got to start first, then they go to standing, then they go to split stance, single leg lifts. If you cannot pass any of those tests, you just won't move on. Now, core motion, something important here. The first two phases, core awareness, core movement, simply uh, is focusing on mind-muscle connection and then core movement, mind-muscle coordination. So core motion uh, in this program is going to be based around pitching, but what core motion could be is if it were volleyball or soccer or hitting or football, whatever it might be, this is going to be the positional requirements of the middle. The patterning is what we're doing here. So what we would include in here is just the movement motion prep. That's just moving through a series of movements without having to throw. The med ball motion is just explains itself. Uh, the arm care and then the throwing program. And what you're going to notice with most of these, as you see the program, there's only three inside of each one. So a couple of components inside the throwing program. Number one is just progressive tension, make a throw, step back, make a throw. This is really focused on foot stability, body awareness, over, under, 210. It just means heavy, light, none. Corkscrew, uncorkscrew the hips. It's just your hook behind angle. You turn it and hook it in front, and then you take the belt off. And then around the horn is basically the uh, feed the mistake to where uh, I'm going to start at first base if I'm a right-hander. It's going to pull me towards the ball of my foot. Then I'm going to move straight on, but with tension. And then I'm going to go to third base to where it's pulling me to my heel. Um, and then finally, we get into core velocity. We're going to move into some skill work. We're starting to get to the mound. It's going to be mound work. It's going to be attaching it for back picks, just a change of directions, swinging the bat right and left-handed, distraction with command where we keep the same spot, but we would move around the horn. Base running just for an explosive movement, and then pitch development, picking one pitch. 
crossover ability work, this will be performed on the days off. Now crossover ability work, the focus here is just cross training patterns which require rotation, stability, and skill work outside of your sport or position. That could be swing, if I'm a pitcher, I'm swinging a bat, I'm kicking a soccer, soccer ball, I'm broad jumping, I'm kicking field goals, it's mound med ball. And then finally, if we're going to talk about velocity, we're going to talk about the organic recovery because no matter what you do, uh, everybody gets caught up on mechanics and the physical side of it. But if you're not sleeping right, eating right, breathing, hydrating your body, uh, none of this even matters. So that's how this is laid out. All right, so find the next and final part is just the eight-week starter program. So, all right, week number one, what we're doing here, you can see how it's broken down. These are what the category of each fall under. And what you're going to see is the gray area here. The reason for the gray area on week one, if you had to share a belt on a team or if you were limited on time, the gray is what I would choose for you to do with the belt. Then the rest could be done with or without the belt. So that's the reason for the gray. So on the first week, we're just going through all of these. So this would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or day one, three, and five. And then on the days off, what we're doing is just crossover ability where we're actually swinging a bat, starting off 100% oppo on the second day, 50-50 on the other. Uh, a couple of things that you'll notice in here, we've got broad jumps, we've got field goal kicks, we've got swings, uh, med ball mound, just anything to make it fun, make it more of a novelty to where kids can compete and we're creating patterns without the, the conscious thought. So in week two, you're going to notice that uh, I'm just interchanging the exercises so I can introduce to, to each of the, the players. And then with the throwing program, um, what we're doing here is just hook behind for six, hooked in front for six. Then we go to around the horn. And then finally, we're going to end with over under. And uh, with the crossover skill, now this could also be done on the second day. So it's just really a matter of how much time that you have, but we just have distract command to where we're putting the belt on different angles, uh, different positions, combinations. Back picks is where I would just attach it to the front hip and I'm trying to be a right-hander picking to first, a left-hander picking to third, and then finally they get a choice. So that's how it's all laid out weeks one through eight, and that's the premise of the entire Core Velocity Belt 5.0 training program.